Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So in a video a fair while ago, I showed you my process in fixing this do-it-yourself solar panel that I made uh, probably sometime last year. Uh, and since then you can see uh, there was quite nasty wind and I left this thing outside and around 10 of these panels, they all smashed to pieces like these ones that are missing they just completely shattered uh, there's around 20 intact ones left so what I'm going to do with those is I've gotten a bit wiser this time and I'm going to put them inside a, a picture frame hopefully that will uh, keep them somewhat weatherproof or at least windproof I won't leave it out in the rain or anything uh, but we should be able to get around 20 of these little solar cells and that should generate around uh, 10 volts. I don't know, we'll have to do a power curve and see what kind of power we can get off it, but uh, hopefully the sun will come out a bit later today and we'll be able to do some testing with it. But for now, we'll cut off all of these, uh, these panels here and we'll rewire it all up within the picture frame. First thing to do is to just uh, snip off all the dodgy panels. Uh, so we'll get that wire there. If I can get it with the scissors, yep. And snip all of these panels off, leave us with just the good ones. Now that that's done, we've got all the broken panels down here. Uh, some of these are actually very, really essentially intact, just missing a couple of uh, couple of bits off the side. So I might end up adding one or two uh, to the final panel. Uh, however, there are a lot of just these tiny little pieces, which have a hundred of now. Uh, they're not worthless, they still generate uh, solar power essentially because I mean they still work, they've still got um, the surface on the front and the surface on the back that you can connect wires to. Uh, if you've got any ideas of what I can do with those then leave an answer in the comments. I've got, yeah I've got, I think I've got a hundred of them or so. Uh, and with these intact ones on the plate we can just uh, carefully slide them out and then we'll wire it all up on this panel over here. So I just slide them out of the guides really carefully like so. And there we are. We'll just leave these on here for now and I'll get the rest of these off. And so that's done. Uh, sadly, one of them wasn't as intact as I thought to add it to this pile. There was a crack through the middle. So we only have 19 intact ones, which is a little bit disappointing because uh, we won't have that nice 5x4, 4x5 uh, set up on the panel. Uh, it won't look as nice. Maybe I'll put one of these in, but I'm thinking that that might, due to the um, the reduced area that might limit the current that I'm able to get off the cell because I'm going to put them all in series and then put a diode or something uh, and putting a broken one in might limit that uh, maximum current that we can get so we'll see how it goes anyway. So now what I think's best is if I solder them into strips of four like that strip there and then we'll lay uh, the strips down just like that and then wire them all in series. So I'll get to soldering four of these together. So now that's done too. We've got uh, one strip of three cells and then three other strips of four cells. Uh, four other strips of four cells, sorry. Uh, I'll take apart the picture frame now, get the base out and lay out all these as we want it to look like. I think that will do nicely and we'll stick that uh, clear cover over the front. Uh, but now we'll tape down all of these wires. Uh, we won't tape down the solar panels because they might be a little bit too weak for that. But we'll tape down all those little wires so, to keep them in place when we prop up the actual panel. And then we'll just wire them in series so that we've got one big long line of panels going zigzagging like that. And we should have around about 10 volts uh, open circuit voltage at the end. Each panel generates around about 0.5 volts. Uh, but we'll measure that at the end. So I think that part's done. We've got it all wired up. So we've got uh, positive over here. It's coming along to there. We'll drill a couple of holes 
to get the wires to go out uh, a bit later. I've got a negative going up here, and I've just put these little little wires. I've taped them on uh, just to raise up, just to act as a barrier between uh, this sheet and the actual panels because I don't really want uh, it'll be pressed up against this, and I don't really want to press anything onto these uh, solar cells. So hopefully uh, the transparent sheet will just press on these wires rather than pressing on the solar panels. Uh, but I'll drill those holes and stick it in and we'll see how it works. And we've got the wires hooked up through the holes. We've got a voltage on the multimeter. It's only 8.6 volts in here. There's no sun so we don't expect it to be too high. I think we're ready to put it into the case. So I think we're done. Uh, the panel went in really well. You can see here the um, transparent sheet over the top uh, does, definitely doesn't press down on any of those uh, solar cells and I've got room for I don't know, five more panels if I choose to buy some more or if I choose to put in those broken ones uh, I've got the voltage coming out here and sadly the uh, sun isn't out yet but maybe in the afternoon uh, I'll come back and we'll do some testing with it otherwise I'll have to wait till tomorrow for future reference, uh, with a bit of cloud cover, we have around nearly 11 volts open circuit voltage. And then if we switch the current, we have approximately 1.75 uh, short circuit current. And even with clouds covering the sun, it'll actually run this drill motor. So better than I thought. Yeah, look, the sun isn't going to come out today, I don't think. It was just raining a little while ago, so we'll have to put off the testing uh, until tomorrow. Alright, it's the next day. Uh, the sun is shining very brightly now. Uh, it's the perfect conditions for testing the solar panel. So we'll connect up the multimeter and see what kind of current and voltage readings we can get off it. So we've got a little bit over 10 volts, uh, open circuit voltage and short circuit current check that we have over 4 amps so that's that's pretty all right just like before it'll run a drill motor really easily so seeing as I don't really have anything else to power with the solar panel I'm thinking to get like a full power curve uh, what we'll do is just separately connect up each one of these motors that I've got and hopefully they'll all require like a slightly different voltage and then we can measure the voltage and current with the multimeter and check for each one uh, the amount of power for the amount of voltage that the, the panel is giving off. So I'll connect all of these up, get some readings and see if I can make a graph for you. So that didn't work very well. Uh, all, the, all the motors were at pretty much the same voltage, around 9.5 volts that they uh, were powering off the solar panel. Uh, but I'll, I'll make a graph anyway, I'll show you it now and I'll compare it to the power curve that I made for previous solar panel. Uh, I'll probably make a proper power curve for this in another video but for now I think we're done. Well there we are, relatively weatherproof solar panel. I'll probably in the future maybe I might buy like 30 more panels and then that can fill up those five, five empty spots there and then I'll have another 25 left over to make another one of these panels because each if I add five, then it uses 24 panels, and I'll have one extra. Maybe I'll buy a second uh, picture frame, build a second one, then I'll be able to get a lot of solar power. But until then, catch you next time.